I think there's no greater um, example of the disconnect between the mainstream media, and that's so often Toronto and Ottawa centric, uh, between what they think the conservative base cares about and what the conservative base cares about. I think the greatest example of that is Leslin Lewis and the coverage of Leslin Lewis. Uh, you and I were talking yesterday, um, and I pulled the numbers yesterday. If you go on the CBC website as of yesterday, there was 1,436 uh, unique hits for Kamala Harris on the CBC website. So that's the, the state broadcaster that gets $1.6 billion a year from Canadian taxpayers who talk about Canadian things versus 265 hits for Leslin Lewis. So Leslin Lewis doing something quite historic. Um, she's a black, uh, accomplished woman, immigrant from Jamaica, from Toronto. You would think that she would be somebody that the CBC and the mainstream media would champion. And yet they hardly talked about her. And many of the um, mentions of her were just indicating that she was also running in the race against everybody else. Um, uh, and yet, Leslie Lewis took Saskatchewan, took ba backwards hillbilly Saskatchewan. Oh, there are a bunch of bigots out there because they're so conservative. She won in Saskatchewan and uh, she came in second here in Alberta. You know, I think uh, obviously Erin O'Toole winning the leadership race will be the most written about story, but yeah. in my mind, the most interesting story of the leadership race is Leslie Lewis and the fact that someone who wasn't uh, a career politician, didn't have a, a political background, came within a hair's breadth of being leader of the Conservative Party. I mean, if you look at that second ballot result, yeah. had a few more points gone her way and she had been pushed up into second place, it's quite possible she would have won that leadership. and. You're absolutely right that she did not get a lot of fair and detailed coverage uh, in the media. I mean, Kamala Harris rightfully is a news story of the fact that it's a, a woman on the ticket who's African American who, who um, it, you know, could quite likely be the first female vice president. I'm not saying that that's not a news story. Absolutely, but it's it's even more remarkable to think that someone like Leslie Lewis came came inches away from leading you know, one of Canada's two main political parties. And regardless of the fact that she didn't win, she will play a key role in the Conservative Party moving forward. You know, she will be a minister, a senior minister under Prime Minister O'Toole, if and when that ever happens. Now, I guess the question is, why do you think they didn't cover her then? Well, uh, you know, you, you, I can't really comment on how the CBC makes decisions. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know. Uh, I guess I would say that um, Leslie Lewis didn't fit conveniently in one of the boxes that a lot of media like to like to have when it comes to conservatives. So they they are used to conservatives sort of being middle aged white guys who are uh, you know either suburban or from small towns, and they I don't think they really knew what to make of Leslie Lewis. She didn't fit neatly into a stereotype or a mold for a lot of the media. And so they were flummoxed, I think, by her candidacy. I, I mean, not to not to deride all reporters who cover politics, but I'm sure quite a lot of them looked at Leslie Lewis and thought, what are you doing in this party? What, you, you aren't a conservative, yeah. just, you know, and I'll make that judgment just on superficial and personal characteristics, that a woman couldn't be a conservative leadership candidate, that a minority or an immigrant couldn't be a conservative leadership candidate, that a highly credentialed person couldn't be a conservative leadership candidate. So I, I'm really excited. You know, you saw Leslin today put out a great graphic showing her support for Erin O'Toole and saying, I'm going to be with you as we as we win the next election together. And I think that's actually the attitude we need, that, that we're all in this together uh, and that we need everybody from the Erin O'Toole's to the Leslin Lewis's to the Derek Sloan's we need every single person who's a conservative voting conservative to win the next election. Yeah, it's going to be interesting where um, the diehard Peter McKay supporters fit into all of this because there are a lot of them and a lot of them were pretty prominent um, Western politicians even. Um, I think Aaron O'Toole has a big job ahead of him sort of mending that. I mean, that's a really big 
ideological crack in the party, but I think it's the same one that Harper had to mend with Peter McKay, actually. Yeah, it's not something that I think a lot of people think about when they think of Stephen Harper, but, you know, I worked on his leadership campaign back in 2003 and 2004, and the moment he became then leader of the Canadian Alliance, uh, he reached out to heal. You, you may remember that a group of MPs had broken away to form this new caucus. Well, the first thing he did was bring almost all of them back into the fold. And then when he pursued the merger with, um, uh, the, with Peter McKay and the, and the PC party to form the new Conservative Party, after he became the leader of that party, he invited people from the PC side, from different leadership campaigns to not only be uh, you know, in caucus and to have prominent caucus roles, but also key staffers, key, key political employees who had not been on his campaign team, but who he recognized talent and ability in. So I think for, for Aaron O'Toole, uh, he does have a big job. Of course, Pierre McKay received the most caucus support, the most MPs indicated their support for him. I suspect though that uh, based on how hard he worked in the campaign, Aaron O'Toole will be rolling up his sleeves, making phone calls, having meetings, and he'll be making sure that everybody, every caucus member, uh, Pierre McKay's campaign staff, the whole the whole group, he, he will try and make them feel at home in an Aaron O'Toole-led Conservative Party. Yeah, I mean, I hope one of those phone calls he makes is to Jason Kenney, to ask Jason Kenney how you did it, because Jason Kenney did much the same thing, sort of taking uh, two parties smushing them together and making sure that there's a place for everybody within it. So it can be done in one of the most conservative places in the entire country. If you'd like to get access to my show, as well as other great TV style shows too, like Ezra's Nightly, Ezra Levant Show, and David Menzies' Friday night show, Rebel Roundup, just go to rebelnews.com slash subscribe. That's rebelnews.com slash subscribe.